The watch that I wore most this year is my Rolex Explorer 14270. I wrote a pretty in-depth article last year on the site about this watch, and I looked at so many pictures of it during my research that I just knew I had to have it. And uh, I pretty much spent the whole year wearing it. The watch I officially wore most this year was my Grand Seiko SBGM 221. Um, it was given to me by my wife uh, to commemorate the birth of our son this year. Um, however, the watch I probably wore the most was my G-Shock 5600, but I will most likely be out of house and home if I were to have picked that one. The watch I wore most this year is this little Movado Museum watch. Um, I bought it right when I got the job at Hodinkee because it's a watch that I've always liked. I like the incredibly minimalist design. Um, and it felt like the last time I was going to buy a watch with sort of a unencumbered um, point of view and it felt like something I should do before receiving all of this knowledge and getting deep in the in the weeds on um, all things watches. Watch I wore the most this year is my Rolex Explorer 1016 and the reason I wore it so much is I spent the whole year trying to make the perfect Gibson martini and Ian Fleming who created James Bond also wore a 1016 and he drank up to a bottle of gin a day. Cheers. Mmm. Perfect. The watch I wore most this year was the Weiss Standard Issue Field Watch. I love the latte dial and the skeleton hands. It's a really well-built field watch that's made by a true mom and pop shop around the corner in Nashville. Just Cameron, his wife, and his dog. And the watch has really served me well this past year. The watch I wore most in 2021 is this vintage Mito multi Fork. I'm pretty sure it's from the 1940s. It has a lot of the quintessential field watch elements, but in a reduced size, which I find really charming. I love tiny automatic movements because they're both impressive and functional. Mito is one of those great brands to dig into the history of, so it was a surprisingly fun conversation piece and one of my favorite watches. So the watch I wore most this year, 2021, is really the watch that I've had the longest. It's a watch that those of you who've been following along since the beginning probably know pretty well. It's my grandfather's Omega Speedmaster. It's a Mark 40 using a Valjoux 7750. It's the watch that got me started in watches. It's the watch that inspired me to start Hodinkee. It's also the watch that means the most to me. Uh, and I realized this year, even though it wasn't the 20th year that I've owned it, I've realized that I've now owned this thing for over 20 years, which is more than half of my life. Uh, you know, a lot of stuff changed for me this year. I left New York City. Um, many things happened all for the better. And I think this was one that kind of really reminded me of where I've been, where I'm headed, and just really makes me happy in, in a different kind of way than literally every other watch that I own. The watch I want to share with you today is my Blancpain Le Mans Ultra Slim from the early 2000s. I picked it up three or four months ago and it hasn't left my wrist ever since. It's the rare watch that when I look at it, it just makes me feel happy. And as we enter 2022, I think that's something we could all use a little bit more of. Happy holidays. This is my IWC Pilot Chronograph Le Petit Prince. I bought when I was 21 years old at a boutique in uh, Washington DC that I worked at and I sold my car and I worked uh, about a whole summer to purchase it and then uh, I wear it almost every day. This is my school time parchi created by my friend and fellow tourist Cara Barrett. Um, I absolutely love this watch because of its colors and adjustable strap makes it easily enjoyed by kids and adults. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's super comfortable and lightweight and that's why it got the most wrist time for me this year. The watch that I wore most this year is my G-Shock Full Metal on resin strap. And I bought it because even though my watch taste typically leans more conservative, I've always had certain affinity for G-Shock, especially this model because it has a certain edge to it that makes it fun to wear. And the resin strap really helps with the weight, um, making it more comfortable while also offering a nice aesthetic contrast. This is my Breda watch. It was gifted to me when I was 16 by a family friend. It came in an elaborate box that I was very impressed by. I thought it was possibly one of the coolest gifts I had received. I started to wear the watch more this year, mostly because I had just started here at Hodinkee and I didn't want to be seen as a Philistine who didn't own a watch. The more I wore it, the more I remembered that time in my life and how things were, in hindsight, much simpler. I recently researched this watch and learned it was released as a woman's watch. That made me laugh and kind of love it a little bit more. Well, the watch I wore the most in 2021 was uh, obviously none other than this 36 millimeter yellow gold day date reference 1803. Whenever I look at it, I just I, don't know, I think about how long I wanted one, honestly. Partly, I think about uh, what a pleasure it was to get it the way I got it, but you know, 
50 years. It's a long way. So the watch I wore most this year is my Rolex Oyster Perpetual 116000 with a black dial. The reason this watch is so special to me is I purchased it as a celebratory gift for a promotion I received and also purchased a birth year watch for my first daughter, Piper. It's a close tie between the GMT Master II, which I wear very frequently, but the other watch that I wore a lot this year is the Seiko SRQ029, which I think is Seiko's kind of a sleeper hit. I drove across the country wearing this watch and timed it, and it, I bonded with it, and it just didn't come off the wrist since. This is my two-tone Cartier Santos. Uh, it is by far the most comfortable watch that I own. Every time I'm wearing it, I forget that I have it on. Um, it's as much at home with jeans and a t-shirt as much as anything else. And truly, this watch is in a class of its own. There is nothing else out there like the Cartier Santos. The piece which had maximum wrist time for me this year was the Legacy Machine Perpetual Evo. Why? First of all, the movement, the Stephen McDonnell invented 581 component um, masterpiece, which is not only absolutely stunning to look at, but is actually foolproof. And why the Evo? Because we suspended the movement on a flex ring to make it, make it anti-shock. It's totally water resistant, rubber strap, and therefore I actually wore it for months on end, which actually scared a little bit. Um, because I thought maybe I'm not going to want any other watch. But luckily when you're a watch lover, after a few months I had this urge to wear something else. The watch I wore most this year was my Tag Heuer Aqua Racer. Uh, it was my mom's and she gave it to me earlier this year and I really love the contrast of the more rugged dive watch sensibility with the really feminine diamonds and mother of pearl. This is my Blancpain 50 Fathoms Mill Spec Limited Edition for Hodinkee. Um, this watch means a lot to me uh, because Blancpain was the first watch brand that I worked for in the early days of my career in the watch industry. And I was lucky enough then to work on uh, the re-edition of the 50 Fathoms to pay tribute to the deep history of this watch. Merci beaucoup, Mr. Junot, for that uh, great opportunity. Um, I feel really fortunate uh, to be able to bring it full circle and release this Hodinkee Ellie last year. And it wouldn't be mine unless I uh, put it on a Hodinkee strap. This is my Grand Seiko SBGM221 GMT. When I look at this watch, I think of its really immaculate dial. I also think of wonderful memories spent traveling around the world, including a trip to Japan, uh, as well as my wedding day. This is the watch I wore for that. So the watch I wore most this year was my grandfather's vintage 18 karat gold long jean admiral five star automatic watch. You see, my grandfather's watch was stolen by my uncle and then it was stolen by my great uncle. And then when my great uncle passed, it was gifted to my father by my grandmother. And then my father gifted it to me. I paired it on one of our Hodinkee dark olive calf skin watch straps. And it just reminds me of all the crazy history that it has gone through, and I can't wait to make more memories with it in the future. The watch that I've worn most this year is the Omega Speedmaster 145022-69 reference that my wife purchased for me last Christmas. Uh, it's an interesting story as to how we came by the watch, uh, but I'm very thankful that my wife agreed to allow me to purchase this for Christmas last year, and I have enjoyed the watch for the entire year. The watch I wore the most this year is my AP uh, Royal Oak Scuba. You know, here in Kansas City Chiefs land, I tend to wear a lot of red, and you know, this is a fun one to match up with most of the things I'm wearing. So it's easy to wear. I love it on the rubber strap. It's nice and thin. It looks cool. So this is my most worn piece of the year. So the watch I wore most in 2021 would probably have to be my favorite watch in my collection currently. It was a gift to myself when I first joined Hodinkee and that is the Cartier Tank in pink gold. Manual wind, guilloche dial, vintage size. What can I say? Sweatpants and tanks, it's the new norm. So this year, my most worn watch, maybe not a huge surprise, it's the Seiko Prospects SPB143. You know, it almost lost out to my new Braemont S302, but uh, if we really go by day, you know, the fact that I wore it basically all summer, it was just NATO to my wrist the whole time. 
I uh, really gave it the edge uh, to catch up with the same effect as last year. You know, I love this watch. It's an easy wearing dive watch. It's the right size. The loom is incredible. And I just adore the way that it looks. It comes in a bunch of different versions, but this is just kind of the standard gray black. And uh, yeah, you know, same watch for another year. Can't really complain. <laughs>